I want to thank all of you for coming to my TED Talk today. I can't begin to explain how much of an honor it is for me to be up here talking to you. I remember back in high school when you used to have to watch TED Talks for classes, and you used to sit in class and think, wow, how cool would it be to stand up there and give a talk like that? But little did I know, two to three years later, I would be right here talking to you all in the same manner. Now, to be honest with you, two to three weeks ago, when I was even introduced to this idea of giving a TED Talk, I didn't know exactly what it was that I wanted to talk about today. I had various ideas all in my head, all that I thought were equally important. It was one or the other. I couldn't decide. It wasn't until I sat down at lunch and I overheard the table of gentlemen talking next to me about democracy in America and how it's playing out. And this really spurred my thoughts. And it was at that moment the light went off in my head and I knew exactly what it was that I wanted to talk to you all about today. Hence the title of my talk, Democracy, an Ideal Unfit for America. Now, before I get into my talk, I know that many of you in here likely have opinions on the topic. Many of you very strong opinions. But I ask one thing of you before I, before I talk, one thing of you, which is to listen to me. Hear out what I have to say. I promise you that it's not what you think. And the ideas that I present you today might have you think about democracy in a way that you've never thought before. Now, to get into what democracy is in America, I want you all to take a second and have an experience that, like the one I had when I sat down for lunch. Take a second and I want you all to try and recollect each time that you've heard democracy used when talking about America, let's say in the past week. Well, now that you've thought about in the past week, how about the past month? Well, now that you've thought about in the past month, how about the past year and even years prior to that? Chances are that you've heard democracy used when talking about America so many times that you can't recollect each individual time that you've heard it. I, for one, have heard it numerous times that I can't recollect it. And it's not surprising. Democracy has been a term used to describe American politics for the ages, longer than I've been alive or anyone in this audience has been alive for. So much so that they've been used interchangeably that the two terms themselves, democracy and America, seem inseparable from one each other. They seem conjoined. However, this brings me to the point that I want to bring to you all today, which is that the two terms themselves are not inseparable. In fact, they're inseparable in several aspects. And it is because they're separable that I don't think they should be used so easily interchanged with one another. To use democracy so easily with America is to overshadow what makes America so special to narrow ourselves down to one definition of what America is to democracy is to take away from the fact that the most important aspect of America is that we preserve individual liberties. Now to explain what I mean about this, I must explain what democracy is. In pure democracy or in ranked democracy, as many like to call it, majorities are free to impose their will upon the minorities. By a simple majoritarian vote, the most can infringe upon the least. Or if you'd like to think about it, how uh, famous political writer Jonah Goldberg says, democracy is when 51% of the people can pee in the cornflakes of 49% of the people. Now I know that Mr. Goldberg's example is a funny one, yet it has serious aspects to it because it gets at the root of the problems with pure democracies. In a pure democracy, majorities commit heinous crimes against the minorities. Yet, this is, this is a problem that we see throughout history. It doesn't take much to look back on the various times throughout history in which minorities have committed heinous crimes, or majorities have committed heinous crimes against minorities. Take, for example, the Nazis murdering millions of Jewish people, or American colonists enslaving African Americans for centuries. Yet I do understand that democracy has taken more of a nuanced term or a nuanced meaning in America. When talking about democracy today, it is, it is hard to uh, negate the fact that 
Many of our elected positions within America are elected through de democratic voting. Rights. Take, for example, the office of the presidency. In America, individuals vote, and the majority of those individuals decide which candidate assumes office. Even more so, the term itself means things different from its actual voting procedure. When people talk about democratic countries, they think of free countries, countries where people are free. And that, I think, is the most key part of democracy. And it brings us to the example of the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is, I think, the best example of how individual liberties are preserved within America. You and I have the right to speak freely. We have the right to worship whatever religion we see fit. We get to assemble with whomever we see fit. We have a free press. We're not able to be punished cruelly or unusually. And the list goes on and on. These things are what we hold dear to being Americans. It's what makes America so special. In America, majorities are unable to impose their will upon the minorities. And it is for this reason that America is not a pure democracy and ought not to become one. For if America were to become a pure democracy, those civil liberties, those rights that we hold so dear to our hearts, like my ability to speak freely to you all today, would be in jeopardy. Therefore, I ask all of you to take a more nuanced position in the future when talking about these topics. See democracy in a different way. Don't think of it purely as a way to vote. Think of it as the preservation of liberties, the most important part. It is why America is held in such high regard. It's what makes us so special. We have a system in which liberties come first. Therefore, I hope all of you can come away from this talk today seeing that a pure democracy is truly an ideal that is unfit for America. Thank you.